Hello, everyone, and welcome to the second of four events from the Minnesota Historical Society to discuss shared spaces and public places. My name is Tom Weber, and we're discussing um, cases and, and moments uh, both here in Minnesota and nationally where places and spaces have been renamed or reclaimed. We are gathering online today in our homes and in our offices. I suspect most of us are joining um, from the ancestral homeland of the Dakota and Anishinaabe people. We're also gathering during what has been a, a, a traumatizing and a re-traumatizing week for people, and we want to acknowledge that. We hope you'll take care of yourself. If your heart is heavy, um, hopefully, maybe this story uh, will we're about to tell will help. And what we're talking about today is renaming a school in 2017 in Minneapolis after Justice Alan Page. A long time, you may remember him early on, he was a Hall of Fame football player, but then he also uh, became a lawyer and then a justice on the Minnesota Supreme Court. And that's what we're talking about here. And one of the goals of this series, of all four events, is to provide common language for people, especially those interested in reclaiming or renaming something in your community. The truth is you're not alone. This has been done and maybe you'll get some help and assistance out of uh, these conversations for one of your efforts. So we're gonna have several guests today and we're going to start, um, we're, we're hearing from people who made this happen and we're going to start with the students, some of the students who helped really kick this off at the school that is now known as Justice Page School. Um, it was at the time known as Ramsey Middle School, and we'll talk about that name more in a moment. So my guests for the first part of this program, and they'll be back at the end too, is Hawa Ibrahim, currently a 10th grader at Washburn High School, who worked on this during grades 6, 7, and I believe a little bit of 8th grade. So Hawa, thank you for being here. Hello. And Olivia Borden, also a uh, senior now at Washburn. Both of these guests were students at then Ramsey Middle School when this effort started. Olivia, thank you for being here as well. Thank you. Um, so how, I want to start with the idea that people who are watching this, either live, maybe they'll watch this later, you know, um, online whenever they have a moment. They'll be watching it because maybe they're interested in a similar effort in their community. So let's just start off with that kind of a big picture question. What would you tell them? What advice would you have for them? Um, personally, I would tell them that it has to be a community effort, but it has to be something that everyone wants to do, not something that um, an individual wants to do. It can start off as an individual idea, so overall, at the end, it should come together as a collective and do it all together. Olivia, what would you add to that? I would completely agree with what Hala said. And also, I would say that just because, even though it is a community effort, just because everyone doesn't like the idea or love the idea at the beginning, doesn't mean that people can't be persuaded. Um, like with us, like, lots and lots of kids like join the campaign partway through the year at the end of the year community members parents um so i would say if you believe in it just go for it and you'll convince people along the way so i want to know a little bit of the background how did this idea of changing the school's name come up and i'll open it to either one of you just 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 jump in there i'm not actually sure which of the two of you may have been there earlier, or maybe you both joined around the same time. So just jump in. Well, every student at Justice Page Middle School or at the time Ramsey in sixth grade, you take a Minnesota studies class. Um, so when I was in sixth grade, we learned about Alexander Ramsey and the Dakota people and all the treaties and the largest ma mass execution in United States history. And everyone was like, oh, like, this is really, really messed up. Like, why are we named after this guy? And like, those conversations kind of went on for like a few days, but then it kind of fizzled out and people kind of stopped talking about it. Um, and then, so the summer, and I had heard the same thing from kids in older grades, like they had had those same conversations in their sixth grade Minnesota studies classes. Um, so the summer before my eighth grade year, um, uh, me and some other people were like, wow, like, I mean, this is our last year, like, we should, we should go for it. How, how do you remember joining that as well? What was, what was happening? Um, for me, it was the summer I was coming into Ramsey. I remember hearing about it on social media and through my older brother, he's in the same grade as Olivia, and he went to Ramsey at the time, and he kind of 
told me about it and kind of talked about it together with my family and it was sort of like interesting to hear about and then next year I went into it with Mr. Summers and they had a U.S. history class and I got to know more about it and who Alexander Ramsey was so that kind of helped me um, get me started in my involvement with the rename. So who was he, Hawa? Who was Alexander Ramsey? Well, he was uh, someone from um, the U.S. government in from Minnesota back, I don't remember the dates exactly, but he was racist and he was biased towards Native Americans. And by the school, we really didn't believe that he represented us. Mm -hmm. Olivia, what else do you remember about the Alexander Ramsey uh, biography, I guess? Well, I remember how he was like involved in the signing of all like the treaties and how, you know, there was like interpreters, but like the indigenous people didn't like were kind of like tricked and lied to with these treaties and like didn't really um like Alexander Ramsey and other people were like not being truthful about what were in these treaties and then Specifically, he was the territorial governor of Minnesota and the largest mass execution of in U.S. history ever was like it was an order that he sent to Abraham Lincoln to be approved. And this was after the U.S. Dakota War of 1862. One other note I'll make about uh, that Governor Ramsey at the time was that he after this uh, this war in southern Minnesota and western Minnesota, he spoke to a joint session of the legislature and said the Sioux Indians of Minnesota must be exterminated or driven forever beyond the borders of the state. Um, interestingly enough, a few years ago, Governor Dayton, one of Alexander Ramsey's, um, not predecessors, uh, succession, well, in the line of succession there afterwards, um, actually disavowed those words by Governor Ramsey. When this was happening and you were learning this history, Olivia, I'm just, and again, I'm, I'm keeping in mind people who maybe are thinking about this at their school. Maybe it's not Ramsey, maybe it's a different name. But when you started this, were adults involved or was this start, and then they helped you decide you know, how to form a plan or did you form a plan and then bring the adults in? What do you remember about how you put together this effort? I think the idea itself was very much student driven and it was what we as students wanted. Who's that? Um, <laughs> that's me in, in sixth grade at one of our community voices events, which were like largely facilitated and led by students. But I think when it actually came to having like the plan and the framework of what to do, we received a lot of guidance um, from our teachers. Great. How about what was the idea? Yeah, what was the idea here when you put together the plan? What was it? Oh, and the, look at look at that. There we go. <laughs> That's you. I mean, was it? What did you have to know? I mean, I guess that this is the question that you, when you're figuring out something like this, what are the kinds of things you had to learn before you could then start to go and start to try to change this school name? Well, you have to know the history behind the name and the school, and you know, is um, is like the new rename something that you wanted to do and sort of why do you want to do it before you went forward with it and made it, executed the plan. Who's in charge of changing a school's name, Olivia? Um, well, the site council had to approve it and then the school board has to approve that name change. So the site council is, I think that's through the city or the local neighborhood. Is that right? Yeah. The site council is like parents, teachers, community members. Oh, I see. At the school. Yeah. So they had to do it, but then the school board also had to vote. So how did you, what did you do, Olivia? What was it? How do you put together meetings? What do you, how do you, how do you do this when you, you know that ultimately it's a school board that's gonna have to make this decision, but how at the beginning of this conversation says, this has to be a big community effort. So how do you put all that together? Just, just describe how you started putting together some of those early meetings. Okay, so two of the biggest things we had were we had two of these, I referred to them before, the community voices events. And so those were held in the evenings. One of them was, the question was, should we rename Ramsey? And people came to share their opinions and their points of view on that. And then after we kind of decided yes, the second one was 
what should we rename Ramsey and trying to figure out what name people liked. But like all throughout this process, like we, in I think we invited school board members to these events. I think a few of them came. We sent emails. Um, I remember a few students actually met with Superintendent Graff. I remember I was sick that day, so I wasn't there, but I remember like there was meetings and email exchanges like all throughout the year leading up to the end of the year. And did you put in place a specific goal, Hawa? Was this a matter of, you know, again, I'm trying to think of people who are watching this because they want to do this in their community. Did you say, we have to get this done in the next three months or it's never going to happen? Did you give yourself a longer timeline? What, what do you remember about, you know, whether there was any pressure, I guess, maybe even put on by yourselves to get this done in a certain amount of time or not? Maybe you didn't think that way and you would say, this will happen when it happens. Um, I remember we initially wanted it to start off like during the school year and get it done, but obviously that didn't happen. So it kind of kept going, but students kept pushing the idea the next year after that, which is kind of, you know, um, disheartening after the first year, after, like, you know, having so many parents and students and school board people telling us that it isn't going to happen. But then also an encouragement from teachers and student support and, you know, everyone. And, you know, I had to start off small. So it started within the school and then moving on to the community and then site council, school boards and everything. So there was a point, and, and, and let's clarify that, Olivia. So there was a point, what, when the school year ended and maybe you thought, oh, this might not happen? Is that Was that kind of a low point or no? Um, Like, I would say that, like, the idea, it's... Like the idea had been brought up in previous years, but the actual process of renaming was an August through June thing. So it was one, it was that one school year. Um, and we really, like, I'm not saying everyone has to go with that timeline, like other mm -hmm. people who might be watching it, but that timeline worked very well with us with like the timing of our events, the timing of the board meetings, um, and just to like build off that momentum because you can lose a lot of momentum over a summer. So what, when the second part of the question, Olivia, was if no, if, if we don't want to keep this school named after Alexander Ramsey, and by the way, we, there are resources you can look up about Alexander Ramsey. One is through a, a um, an entity called Minipedia, which is run by the Minnesota Historical Society. So you can, if you're watching this and you don't know a ton about Alexander Ramsey, there's a lot more you can find um, online as well. But then you said, okay, well, we need to come up with some names. And it doesn't sound like you just said any one name. It sounds like you were willing to entertain a few ideas. How did that come about? This seems very different. And, and I'll, I'll remind folks that if you were with us for our last conversation, it was about reclaiming a name. We had a lake in Minneapolis called Lake Calhoun. And it wasn't as if we were going to pick a new name. It was that we wanted to reclaim the old name, Bidet Makaska, or the original name. Here, you were coming up with options. How did that work? Um, well, for me, I was in fifth grade, so we had Mr. Summers' class. And students kind of got to research a name. He gave us like certain like things, someone who you would want to represent your school. Students came up with names and presented projects. And then, you know, the list kind of narrowed down. Students voted, parents voted till we got to the name just a stage. Remind us who else was on the list, Olivia. I'm maybe putting you on the spot if you don't remember everyone, but remind, who, who made the final list? Because it wasn't just Alan Page Initially, as I recall, I think there were maybe five names you were thinking of. Yeah, so yeah, we had we had a ton of names. We got to 18, we got to five. But yeah, so that was Justice Page, uh, Prince Rogers Nelson, Martha Ripley, um, Dorothy Vaughn, and Len Bedeota. So then did you have teams that were, uh, I don't know, advocating for each of them? Did you have a, uh, I'm thinking you could have had maybe like a debate about why to do this. What were the things to engage the community and students um, who then I presume were part of picking from those five? Well, yeah, I think, I think two of those people, I think Prince's estate and his family said no thank you and i think one other maybe it was like dorothy vaughn maybe they said no or they didn't get back to us so then we had three and there was a lot of there was voting i think there were surveys i think we talked about it at that event um and justice page was the name that had the most 
the most positive support, but then also the most people that were no, the least people that were unfavorable of that. They were unfavorable. And looks like we're looking at maybe from this assembly where there's those big, huge, oversized post-it notes. And that looks like a, a sheet that, that was putting down why why Justice Page would be good and you know giving towards people, hardworking, fair leadership, education, um, and the like. You know, one, one of the message to people, and we're going to actually hear from two of your teachers here in just a few moments, but one of the message to people watching that we are hearing a lot from in this series is that you don't have to be in a position of leadership to make change. You, neither of you, for example, were the school principal or an elected member of the school board. Um, how do you, when you look back on it, how do you say now to the next group of people who might be working on this to overcome fears, maybe a little bit of an imposter syndrome that they don't feel like they have any voice or agency to say this. What would you say to them when we think about that idea that you don't have to be the person making all the decisions in order to affect change? Olivia? I mean, just like thinking in the context of a school, if a school was just a principal or if a school district was just a superintendent, there would there would be no one to teach, there would be no one learning. Um, and I think you as an individual, you matter. Um, and, you know, just because you're, I think kids are super smart. And I think kids can have a really unique view of the world. And just because you're not an adult, and just because you don't have power doesn't mean that you don't get to have an a you don't get to have a say. And I think the really cool thing about kids is that they or we I'm still a kid, I'm 17. But we can have this really like refreshing view of the world. Um, where older people might be like, oh, like, this is never going to happen. This is the way that it's always been. And I think you should obviously value the perspective of older people, of younger people, of everyone. But just because you're a kid doesn't mean your perspective doesn't matter. How what would you add to that? Um, for me, it was inspiring to see Olivia and her group of friends, like, starting off as student leaders. And then when they left, I kind of helped pick up after that you know, kind of emulate what, she, what her and her friends did. It was um, sort of look up to leaders is what I would say. So the final question I have for you before we bring in your teachers, and then we'll hear from you later during a Q&A session, but I used to live in St. Louis and I lived there um, when there was a baseball player named Mark McGuire who hit a lot of home runs and he broke the record and it ended up that he hit 70 home runs and the interstate right there in St. Louis was Interstate 70. So it was perfect. And they renamed the highway after him. He was still alive. And then a few years later, lo and behold, they find out that he used performance enhancing drugs. And people had a little bit of a different view of Mark McGuire. And the, what I'm getting to with this question is, did you feel like there was any risk in trying to pick a name for someone who's still alive and by the way, we're going to hear from Justice Page later, so I, I, we're, we're going to be okay on that regard. But did you did you feel like even with someone who is as well esteemed as Justice Page, that there was any risk in picking a name of someone who was still alive when, you know, just to put it bluntly, there was still a chance that they could uh, fall from our graces? Olivia, do you have any thoughts on that? Well, actually, that was one of our every I think all the other names that were ever proposed um were that were people that were alive were like initially we were saying no to those names because we were like no like it can't be a person that's still alive like I think a ton of kids suggested like the Obamas like and those were rejected because they were still alive but then I think we got to this one point that someone was like oh yeah the policy was recommending against that um, and then someone was just like, okay, but what about Justice Page? And then we were like, everyone kind of liked that idea. So that's how his name got in. And I mean, I don't know. Obviously, there's some amount of concern, but I, I never felt like I was concerned about that. I think Justice Page's record kind of speaks for itself. I think so many people had met him and had personal experiences with him before that. And I just, and then after I had met him, and I don't, I don't really think it was ever yeah. a concern. 
Well, I have really enjoyed hearing from both of you, Hawa Ibrahim and Olivia Borden. We're going to actually bring on your teachers for a few minutes now to answer some questions, but we will hear back from you at the end when we have our Q&A. So they will be back. Keep um, asking questions in the comments of, your, um, of wherever you're watching this. So two educators who were part of this, Alyssa Cedarleaf Dahl and Paul Summers are joining me as well. And I welcome both both of you. And I'm just going to actually, first of all, you know, we, we talked through a lot of the process and Hawa and Olivia um, knocked it out of the park with the answers. But I just wanted to start by saying, was there anything you wanted to add to anything we've gone over about how we got to here? Alyssa, I'll start with you. <laughs> oh, it was so fun seeing our students retell those stories. It's been a few years now and Olivia helped lead that campaign. And then the last day of school when she was an eighth grader with 80, 90 students that had worked every week on that campaign, we are our officially named Justice Page School. And we had this party on the front lawn and we're shaking his hand and meeting him and putting on paper bow ties and then summer break, right? And <laughs> And um, we come back with this new name, we get t-shirts, we're super excited about it. But, you know, just thinking about students like her and so many leaders that we had that year that worked tirelessly on that campaign, moving on now to different leadership in their lives and seeing them come back and talk about it. I mean, both Hawa and yeah. Olivia were just inspirational students. And, you know, Hawa, we got to have two years after the rename and she got to experience what it was like to be a school with a different name and get to have, um, you know, high five Alan Page on the way into the building on Friday morning. So there's there's a ton to add, but that's just something yeah. I think about when when I hear those two students talk, just yeah. um, I'm so proud of them. I remember at the end of that year, um, one of the school board people asked Olivia, what what did you learn? And Olivia just shared it. She said, I learned that my voice matters. I learned that people will listen to kids and kids have great ideas. And what everybody who's in Facebook right now is learning what great jobs we have. And in this moment, Olivia named it. We can, young people see the world in a different way. They offer hope to the world that adults oftentimes would say that can't happen. This happened in one school year. Yeah. It had been building, but in nine months, and I remember a time where I'd, uh, Alyssa and I were sitting with a, a community organizer and she gave us a long list like this. Do you remember that, Alyssa? Oh, yeah. And she gave us a lot. You got to get the stakeholders. You got to get this. You got to get that. You got to get that. And then we we're like, in a year? <laughs> and and it, it, what you're talking about like a to-do list, basically. To -do like, list. This, is, this is what well, you should do. You fundraise. You got to do this. You got to do this. You got to do It was unbelievable. So, yeah. When the, when, and as Olivia noted and, and how uh, the, the idea started with students, it sounds like relatively quickly they started to bring in adult voices just for advice on what to mm -hmm. do, this, that, and the other thing. So, Paul, when, when this idea, you know, and I, and I know you noted that it sounds like it had been building for a couple of years, but when your colleagues heard about this, I guess, first of all, was there any pushback? And secondly, was there any thought? that yeah, this is actually the year it's going to happen? Like, could you tell that this was gonna be any different? Uh, Alyssa uh, talked about how we ended the year with Justice Page on the front steps. We began the year taking a staff photo on the front steps and zero people in the staff photo on August 24th would have guessed we were renaming a school. Literally zero people. We've got signs up, hashtag this, that. And by the end there, we were standing with Alan Page. Right. So although we knew it was in the background, that momentum and stuff kind of kept building and building on it. Um, I'm not. Me, I, go ahead. We had a new principal that year and yeah. she's texting me right now that she is listening. Because <laughs> her heart rate is probably going up. Remembering Paul and I coming to her in August, her like first week on the job officially with this group of students who'd shown up at the open house making rename Ramsey uh, name tags on pieces of masking tape and passing them out. So yeah. the idea was to the idea was to take because everybody had a Ramsey shirt, but the idea was to yeah. put a tape over it to say rename. Whatever you did, you did, and people were <laughs> making themselves be heard right away. There's uh, Olivia. Yeah, there it version. is. Yeah. Yeah. So fearless students coming in, and here we are with this brand new principal, and Paul and I meet with her, and we say, Miss um, Rapke, the momentum is here. 
and this is the year we need to do this. And these students are ready to lead this campaign. And she said, oh, please don't. <laughs> but she said, you know, she said, oh, I don't know you guys. She had to remain neutral as our leader. Yeah. And we, we said, we are going to explore this idea first. We're going to explore what it would take. We're going to take the temperature. We're going to learn as much as we can about Alexander Ramsey first. And we are going to make it an educational opportunity and a critical thinking opportunity and an opportunity for collaboration and for student leadership and input the whole way through. I'll let uh, Paul talk about this photo. Yeah, just to add to that, I think every kid in the school, although there was a group of uh, 60, 70 student leaders, every kid in the school had an opportunity to lend their voice. Whether it was in a sixth grade Minnesota studies class, seventh and eighth graders who had Minnesota studies had already walked through um, the curriculum on the history and the founding of statehood here in Minnesota. Um, so it, every kid, we, we actually copied the Historical Society's 150 year anniversary. For the 150th anniversary, the Historical Society let the, let the community nominate 150 of the most important people events of our state's history. And I think it was 150 words or 200 words. We copied that same formula and said, what do you think? And kids name, I think we had 170 different nominations. From So you set it up. You set it up in a way that once people thought, yes, we should rename it, you opened up, you set up your own process, although it was borrowed. Right. Yeah. But you said, this is how we nominate. Now, I want to go back to one thing Alyssa said, because this is actually quite important for people who are watching who might be in this themselves. They might be in year two but they don't know that it's going to be four years, right? Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's this year. You said, Alyssa, the momentum is there. How did you know? And how could people watching who are doing this, how will they be able to know when this is the year? Or maybe, as sometimes things happen, you have to percolate and let it happen, and it might take one extra year. How did you know? You know, as educators, our job is to lift up student voice, right? And um, every year we have a different set of students. Some, I'm, I'm lucky. I teach art. I get to have kids two, three years in a row sometimes. The, the flavor of that year, I had had leaders that I'd known since sixth grade come into the school that fall and just be ready to lead. I believe it coincided with Trump's election also that year. Um, so students came in wanting to feel empowered and to make change and to do it on a local level. There was like a powerlessness and a, and mm -hmm. so honestly, we're, we're an urban district in South Minneapolis. Our students were worried. They wanted to do something. And so they looked locally. Yeah. You know, the last conversation, Paul, we had was about Bidet Makaska. And as you will probably remember, just by living in Minneapolis, that was um, there was a lot of opposition. Um, it may not have it obviously wasn't overwhelming enough to stop it. And it may have just been a vocal minority. But what level of opposition was there to this in terms of saying, actually, no, we should keep it, Ramsey? Was there much voice to keep the Ramsey name? So, so in the rename, I'll talk to the the, the process piece and the and the walk and talks. I know Alyssa talked about the students and trying to, as students are leading, not putting them where they're going to get the opposition towards them, right? And Alyssa can talk about some of the strategies she used. Um, yes, there was opposition, but Ramsey and renominating Ramsey was still on the table, so he also was nominated and uh -huh. renominated. So he wasn't officially taken off. It was, should we consider to rename? Right? Interesting. So just to clarify, you, there was a kind of this two-part thing, should we rename it? But even after they said yes, Ramsey was still an option absolutely. for renaming. Ab absolutely. Right. And I think I think Hawa said something to start off by, this is a community event. This is a, we don't do it by ourselves. So there were community members who were not in favor and they were very vocal, right? And they have been uh, members of South Minneapolis and the school communities at Ramsey and Washburn for years, right? And we knew whether we renamed it or not, they were gonna be part of the community. So there were individual discussions, okay, reach out to them, conversation, walk and talks to just to say, tell us where you're coming from, right? And our community meetings that the students led, they were given equal opportunity to voice. Mm -hmm. So it was an including a, a disparate 
uh, time for voices. Yeah. Were you Alyssa, add something, Melissa? Just thinking about, I think the students' voices were the most influential. Paul and I, as um, as the as the teacher, you know, coordinators of the campaign, um, uh, the guides of the campaign, we wanted to put student voices out there. And, and I always would think about all the dinner table conversations that were happening with our students and their families during that year, whether families were um, in support or opposed or just curious, like, why is your school doing this campaign and what's happening? And even if the student didn't necessarily know, you know, or like agree with it, or we tried to educate them, every single student, but even if they weren't part of the leadership, they were still talking about it, still talking about why would some of my classmates be so passionate about this? You know, why is it so important that we're doing this? And, you know, I think that there was just that opportunity to have those some of those difficult conversations and just really yeah. think about, um, you know, why it was happening. So I do think that when yeah. uh, Paul did a great job walking, taking walks with people who in the neighborhood were against the renaming, walking their dogs with them at six in the morning and doing chats and stuff. But really the students were the ones that were doing the convincing and the persuading. And so many of our families and parents and community members that came and sat in those circles with the students left with a completely different understanding of why this was happening. Yeah, and I wanna, you mentioned earlier, Tom, about how do you know it's the right time? This was a year, some of the arguments were, how can we do this now? We're gonna to have to raise money for it. And at that time we had been a one-to-one -one iPad school and that program was removed. So there was people saying, we don't have money for this. How can we have money for that? At the time we had the brand new principal. Two excuses could have been used to say, now is not the time. And the momentum was there and the student voice was there. Incidentally, behind you is the Justice Page School with the Rhino. That's the that that was the mascot before. It was the Ramsey yeah. Rhinos, and you kept that with Justice Page. I, I see that that's also in front of the Minnesota State flag, which is another topic of conversation for people. <laughs> so I don't know if that's your subliminal message there, Paul. Like we did it once, and now we're going to move on. But <laughs> no. um, if you saw, there is a um, this is in the strip. There's a Ramsey School in St. Paul. Yeah. And they are now also thinking about it. Have either of you been contacted? Have you been talking to the St. Paul folks? Yeah, we have. And actually it was wild. A lot of the students in the Rename campaign were part of an anti-racist leadership group that I co-lead with Akua Kennedy here at school called Dare to Be Real. And they work to become anti-racist leaders in their school and community. We went, the year of our campaign, we went to a summit at Ramsey Middle School in St. Paul led by Patrick Duffy and Anthony Galloway. And at the summit, um, we were in a Ramsey middle school of another middle school in the neighboring town. And they were highlighting the work with, that our anti-racist leaders at our school were doing to rename our school with wow. the same name. So that was you know, four years ago. It is a journey. And yeah. I'm, I'm excited to see, I heard about that too this week. I'm excited yeah. to see things are moving. So listen, Paul, we're going to um, put you on pause for just a moment as well, but we will, we will, we, you will be back for a Q&A session because we now have a special guest uh, that we'd like to bring in. The man we've been talking about, this whole school uh, is named for former Minnesota Supreme Court Justice, uh, Alan Page. Uh, Judge, good to see you. And as we were talking before this, the uh, show started, um, I don't think folks can necessarily see it, but your bow tie has little rhinos, rhinos. rhinos on it. <laughs> Absolutely. I had to have my rhinos on today. How'd you first hear about this, Judge? I think it was back in February or March of 2017. I got a, must have been an email, and I, don't, I can't even recall who it was from. But it was asking me if I would be willing to let them consider my name for renaming the school. And um, they, they said at, at the time there were five finalists and I was one of those finalists and would I allow it? Did you have any hesitancy or, or were you like, oh, yeah, let's do it? Well, it's a little shocking 
it's not every day that somebody comes along and wants to um, recognize you that way. And it's also a pretty big responsibility because somebody thinks that you are worthy of representing something that's important to them. And um, it was a little scary, but uh, Diane and I talked about it and we said, but of course, <laughs> why, why wouldn't we? It's, it's one more opportunity to hopefully be able to be involved in, in encouraging children in the area of education. Well, you know, um, I was mentioning earlier that as I have that example from St. Louis, where they named it for a baseball player who was later found to have uh, done um, some performance enhancing drugs. I hope we don't find that when you were on the court, you were juicing uh, when you were writing those opinions, Judge, because <laughs> then this all goes up the river. <laughs> I, I, I think we're safe there. Although, you know, that is a danger because we're all human beings. Um, but um, hopefully we can navigate that, that, that concern. Well, you got to get used to it because uh, a few months ago, the North St. Paul Maplewood Oakdale School Board voted to put your name on a new elementary school in Maplewood. This is a school that's under construction, so it's actually not technically germane to this series because it's not renaming anything. It's just naming something. It's a new building that's going to open next year. Well, but it's replacing an existing school. It's, so they could have just kept the name. Yeah. It's on the site of an existing school that's being replaced, so they could have. Uh, easily kept the uh, kept the name, but they went through the same process and uh, ended up with I think four or five different names, and here we are again. Here we are again. Well, you've won elections before statewide, so well, you know, it wasn't your first election win. But what does it mean? And I know, and, and and clearly for people who know, you you run a foundation that's focused very much on education. But what does it mean? And frankly, I don't know how much interaction you had with Ramsey Middle School in Minneapolis before this. But what does it mean to have this kind of a relationship with the school? Well, before the rename, I had little to no interaction. Um, certainly had more interaction with uh, Washburn because I been there and spoken to classes and that sort of thing. Um, that has changed dramatically. It's like home. It is, um, I mean, Paul and Alyssa and, and the entire Justice Page staff, teachers, um, the administrators, the support staff, everybody. It is just a wonderful place to be. And I, I couldn't have been and couldn't be more fortunate to, to than to be associated with Justice Page Middle School. And, 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 you know, one of the things that's really important to me is they didn't name it Justice Allen Page Middle School. They named it Justice Page Middle School. They were looking for somebody who represented them or, or who re more represented them than uh, Governor Ramsey. But also, if you think about it, they were looking for justice. And they had the insight to focus on justice. And, and that just, for me, is heartwarming. And it's also heartwarming to see the work that those students did to make this happen. I mean, isn't what they did, what they experienced, what they learned, isn't that what education is all about? 
you know, you asked the you asked a question earlier about um, or made reference to you know what they didn't know and how they went about doing it. What they had to learn was what they didn't know. I mean, they started from scratch. And um, had to figure out all the pieces. And, you know, as you know, it's not always easy to um, get things changed, get things done. And they just did it. There was a reference made, and I can't remember who did a few minutes ago, that said something about Fridays. Do you go regularly or maybe in that first year? Do you, is that something you do where you're there every Friday or were there every Friday for a while? Well, the, the on Friday mornings, they uh, welcome the students with a, usually music, uh, ceremony actually they welcome the community in to welcome the students every friday morning and um every friday morning that i'm available i make it a point to be there um i i can't think of any place better to be than on friday morning and since we've been in the pandemic obviously we haven't been able to do that but um we're, we're moving back in that direction. Indeed, um, Monday morning of this week, they welcomed a group of students back into the school, and I was there. They welcome students again next Monday, the next round of students again next Monday, and I will be there. Have you ever brought your tuba? I have not uh, subjected them to that. <laughs> got to got to enter a marathon to do that, I guess, huh? <laughs> well, this has been lovely, and we're not done yet. But what we're we're going to transition to is we're going to get the whole band. Speaking of of band instruments, we're going to get the whole band back together here um, on the screen because we know that people have been watching, and there have been some questions that have come in online as well. So we have some behind the scenes folks who are going to put up some questions that we've gotten as they've come in. And so every, everyone is now back um, if they have any uh, questions. And and you all can say hi to each other as well, because I know you all know each other <laughs> very well. So I just want to see, here we go. Who had the opportunity to vote? Students, staff, community, like what was just the, what was the voting body? And who narrowed down the initial suggestions? Was there certain protocol? Um, Olivia, what, what do you remember from that? What, how do you answer, what were those specific answers? Okay, students definitely voted a few times. Staff definitely voted a few times. I don't know if there was a formal community vote. Someone else could chime in on that, but I do know that we did ask the community for input multiple times. And then for the narrowing down the suggestions, um, we there was a committee put together to do that. I mean, I remember, Paul, this is a few years ago, but when St. Paul, they changed um, Webster School to the Obama School, they I remember they had a vote and they did invite anyone who lived near to come in. Anybody could come vote. So I don't know if that is something that happened with the community here or Alyssa. Yeah, we uh, put out surveys and then we also dropped off flyers and announcements and links to our website where people could go on and vote about renaming Ramsey and then the five new names. We were able to um, share data about what the alumni feel and what um, current students feel and what the staff feels and what parents feel. And we put all of the data, a lot of data collection that year, um, you know, hundreds of students putting new names forward, so assemblies and voting and these community voices and, t and totaling it all up and students like counting ballots. And we put all that data forward to our site council and then the school board. So there's, you know, pages and pages of numbers and, you know, the kids loved 
Prince Rogers, you know, at in the offset, but then, you know, Alan Page, once we got to know him, you know, and that's part of him being a living namesake, he comes and greets students. And this is when, when we voted on him initially, we knew he was an NFL Hall of Famer, Purple People Leader, Supreme Court Justice. Since then, we have gotten to know him in so many ways. He, um, you know, this is a photo of him inviting students to the Testify exhibit that he and his late wife, Diane, had at the Downtown Library during the Super Bowl. So not only is he those things I mentioned before, but he and his wife are collectors of art and artifacts from the Black experience from slavery until now. Um, his Page Education Foundation comes and does a group with our eighth graders, getting them ready to go to college. Um, he's a lover of the outdoors and encourages our students to exercise. He's a maple syruper and an author. And our eighth graders go read his books to our feeder schools, to the elementary kids. And he's so he's kind of like the school grandfather and so much more. And none of that would have been possible if he weren't a living namesake. It's so. worth moaning because, of course, I brought up the idea that you could potentially be embarrassed if you named it after someone who's still living. But it's important to note there's also some benefits um, mm -hmm. as well. Do we have another question um, from our uh, from our audience? Uh, sounds like there was an abundance of support from faculty. Was there much opposition within the schools or the district? Anyone want to jump in there? I, I don't remember the percent. Alyssa did more like the data stuff, but I remember way above 90% staff were in favor of changing. Um, I don't know at the district level what the final vote was, but I thought it was a unanimous vote on the school board to vote to change the name. That, the, no. the superintendent had to bring the name recommendation to the school board. Then the school board voted for us to be named Justice Allen Page, Justice Page School. Uh, our students presented the whole campaign to the superintendent. Paul and I mm -hmm. sat in the back. We had a table full of students that presented the campaign to him. He chose Justice Page, which was our number one choice, and put that forward to the school board. So by the time the school board got it, we had all this data. The students had put the idea forward to the superintendent, and then the superintendent gave the recommendation to rename our school. And yes, it was a unanimous thing. So um, I do, I do want to say, though, that there are other schools in Minneapolis that are attempting something similar. And each school has their own set of circumstances. So what happened at our school, I can't say can be replicated at other schools. And I know, Tom, that's part of today's broadcast today. Mm -hmm. What can be re replicated, what ideas we can share. But I do know that it's harder at a high school level, right? It's sometimes harder with little kids at elementary levels to get them engaged in this level of action and critical thinking. So, um, you know, not necessarily opposition within the district, but um, it's not a one size fits all. How I wanted to ask you, because I, I, I asked um, the instructors here, there's this effort in St. Paul because there's also a Ramsey school in St. Paul. Have you, um, as students, spoke with fellow students? And Olivia, jump in here as well, too. Have either of you spoken with students who are either at that school or another school who are interested in doing something like this? Um, I haven't really spoken much to kids from Rams, the other Ramsey school, but I have spoken to students from Patrick Henry, said the student leader from there. And she kind of told me about how her struggle and what they were going through. And I went to like, a, um, I remember it was like a meeting with Mr. Summers and we got to kind of speak about it together. And, you know, she told me her experience. We kind of compared and got to know more about it. <laughs> Olivia? Yeah, I think my freshman or sophomore year, I talked to a few kids from Henry um, and I haven't been in touch with any of the kids from St. Paul Ramsey, but I'm always so open to talking to people about this. <laughs> well, um, I think what we could do is if people are interested in speaking with his students, we're not going to give out phone numbers here or anything like that on this event, but we can let people, certainly it seems, Alyssa and Paul, that they could contact the school 
and then you know justice page school and then you know you could find a way to get in touch if olivia and how and other former students or current students are amenable you know that th those conversations are completely doable it sounds like and, and mm -hmm. people are willing to do that did yep. anybody i just have to ask this i forgot to ask this earlier but we were thinking of names and what do we deem the school did anyone think of a non-name name like south minneapolis high school or or middle school or you know maple or you know elm you know like did anyone think let's just well, Let's just not do names and go so with something completely non-named. It's interesting. The the one of the finalists was Bede Ota, which is Dakota, um, and I think it is for like village around water or city around water. Um, and it was nominated mm -hmm. in in many of Dakota names are not named after people. That's a Western thing, right? So we're going to lift up individuals as opposed to uh, ge geography or as opposed to what's it like in that area. Um, so yeah, some were nominated and one made it all the way to the end. So Justice Page, I have to I have to ask now that there's been two schools, are you aware of anyone else? Is there gonna be a third school? <laughs> well, you know, for me this has been a singular honor. And I've received a lot of honors in my life. This has been a singular honor. Um having the Maplewood School District name a school after me is another one of those honors. Um, I I don't know that every school needs to be named after me. I'm just not sure that that's really what we need. Um, there are there are lots of other people who either living or who have passed away who would be good representatives of what students think that who, who represent the values and uh, aspirations of students. And um, so I think there's plenty of opportunity to, to share. I know we have one, at least one more question here coming in from online. So let's take a look at that. Um, this is for Hawa and Olivia. Has their experience with this effort impacted their future career choice? Um, what what those cr choices might look like, Hawa? Um, for me, I always wanted to do something that helps and benefits others. But I'm not like a hundred percent sure on anything yet. That set mine. Like I, I'm always open to anything. But I know for sure that like, I want to do something that's helpful to others that benefits everyone. Mm -hmm. Olivia. Yeah, um, not even my future, but my present, I think it's impacted a lot. I think, you know, like names are important and there's like, names are so important, but there's a lot of other issues around equity and racism that are really important to me. And I think what we did um, at Justice Page has like kind of informed my experience at Washburn. Um, I think a lot of schools, and I can say for Washburn, we have a bit of a like a segregation problem within like disparities and who takes what classes specifically like advanced classes are taken a lot by white kids and um that me and some other students are trying to work on that this year and i think the experience of being at justice page and having that success um has like kind of propelled me to do other things although when it comes down to it that getting that done in one year is a pretty i don't want to say easy because it wasn't easy but compared to a lot of other change yeah, it yeah. was <laughs> easy in a way yeah yeah um, can, kind can, of adding go ahead Hala. i'm kind of adding on to what olivia said it was very encouraging to you know come back to school the next year and seeing the name to his page and you know students wearing t-shirts and him at the front every friday saying hi to us high-fiving us it was very encouraging to kind of moving on to high school and you know joining other groups and kind of helping make a difference at Washburn as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, as I mentioned, when uh, Paul and Alyssa were on Olivia and Hawa, the Paul has a flag behind him, and that flag is not without its controversy. So maybe that could be a, a next project for either the students at Justice Page or the or the students uh, at Washburn. Um, Paul, where is this? Uh, I mean. It's interesting to think also we're in this moment where this isn't the only school where they're thinking about renaming it. But then what did you find in the history? It's a school board decision to name schools. When they named it Ramsey, 
many, many years ago. I'm going to go out on a limb and guess that wasn't a student led effort, that that was simply just the adults making the decision. And it seems like we're in a moment now where a lot of these efforts, especially at schools, are driven by the students. Like it's a new era of, okay, adults, you named it for the first part of its history, but we would like a chance. Uh, is that is that how it seems to be going, at least in this example? Yeah. I mean, in this example, I, I think community voice, and I think there's this reckoning we're doing with our history. And it, I think Alyssa found online a school board decision that was maybe this long that's written. Mm -hmm. And we decided to call the school Alexander Ramsey, right? Mm -hmm. It was built, right? Washburn had been built and they were going to build this school. Literally, it's that long in its history. But I think that is, I think you're right on that. I don't know, Felicity, what do you think? Yeah, I think that there were many schools being named in that era in Minneapolis. A lot of schools were uh, built in the same, you know, five, 10 years. And most of the names went to kind of uh, political giants nationwide, Jefferson um, type names. And I think that part of it was that our state was still fairly young if you're looking at, you know, post colonial history. And so you're thinking about who are the heroes in Minnesota from Minnesota in 1930 and the people in that era were were not necessarily getting very creative with that answer or representative with that answer either. So yes, it was just a decision and there there is documentation about how schools were named and it's nothing like what we went through. But can I, can I just jump in? You know, it seems to me that um the other thing that's happening here is that students are being empowered. Mm -hmm. They are the ones who are sort of driving the train, if you will. And being allowed to do that and being able to learn and grow and develop. Um, and I, I suspect that wasn't the case back when uh, it was when the school was originally named. And I think that's a that's a significant change. Yep. Very good. Well, this has been um, a lovely and wonderful and great and empowering story to use the uh, justice's words there. And I hope that people watching will find hope, will find that this is absolutely doable. So in our last few minutes, maybe just one quick swing around with all of our guests about just whatever your parting message is for people who are watching. I mean, to the point I think Alyssa made, it, it won't always be the same. It's not gonna be a copy and paste, mm -hmm. but what are your parting words for people who are watching who are interested in doing this in, in their community? Olivia, I'll start with you. I think anything that you feel like you care about, it's worth it. It's worth putting effort into it, whether you try or you fail. And I think something that really came over me was like, I really had the idea that like, I knew it was wrong and that me and other people were always gonna regret knowing something was wrong and not really doing anything to change it. Um, so I think like, if you see something that's wrong, you kinda in a way have an obligation to go for it. Um, whether or not you're going to succeed or not. Hawa, your parting thoughts? Um, same as Olivia, like follow your heart, do what you believe is right, um, persevere, you know, keep going, like no matter how long it takes. Alyssa? Ah. <laughs> Lots of thoughts. Uh, I remember I have this uh, clay artwork in my kitchen, the time is always right to do what's right, and that was something that we were just thinking that year when it did, you know, it seemed like we were never going to get it done or was this the year to do it? But the time is always right to do what's right. And we all need to be doing right by our community right now. We can't have institutions and names that represent violence against people in our community. It just, oh. we cannot accept that. So Sorry. it's especially relevant right now this week and everything. So, yeah. 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 Um, I just I want to re, re bring back to the spotlight the um, what's been said. You don't have to do it alone. You do it with community. You do it with building voices. You do it with building coalitions, and let your passion lead you in that. And Justice Page, you know, um, just listening to the program and listening to what 
went into the renaming. Um, in, in fact, when the first part of the program, when you had Olivia and Olivia and Hawa on, it brought tears to my eyes listening to the power that they had and that they exercised to bring about positive change. And that just tells me that, you know, we're in pretty good shape for the future. Well, on that note, we will bring this conversation to an end, but we have two more in this series coming up and we invite you to check out the Historical Society website and um, we'll put links as well for uh, the upcoming events. And this event, you know, if you enjoyed it and want to share it, this is going to be available. Just keep watching. Once this stops recording, you can watch it again on on uh, on all the platforms where we're broadcasting. So share it with everybody, share it with people you know who might be going down this road themselves on, on trying to uh, have this impact in their community. And we want to thank you all um, for joining us today. Thanks, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Thank you. Thank you, Howard.